Shutdown initiated. All systems stop. Repeat. All systems stop. Oh, Carol, what is that? What happened? I'm not sure, Professor. There was a surge in the processing unit. I can see that, Frank. What caused it? According to this, we were up to full power when the control unit failed. These readings show reversed acceleration. For some reason, we weren't able to maintain full power. Well, shut it down. We need time to review this data in order to trace the fault. Yes, we should also check the particle field for local disruptions. It became highly unstable just before the control unit failed. The fault could have originated in the accelerator. Unlikely. Well, check it anyway. Yes, sir. Hi, Dad. Hello, Frank. Hello, Professor. How's it coming? Where's? Well, not so well at the moment. We had the accelerator up to full power and, and something went wrong. It appears there's a fault in the control mechanism. Frank, you better check the accelerator and the particle field. Yes, Professor. How are things at the artificial intelligence unit? Oh, fine, when the computer's working. Right now it looks like an anthill down there. Technicians swarming all over everything. Hmm. It's a good thing Bob showed up and gave me an excuse to get out of all that chaos. Well, I wonder what brings the star reporter among we stodgy scientists. Actually, Professor, I came to talk to you. Really? The Globe wants a feature on your career. Uh, Anne and I were just discussing it when everything went haywire down there. A story on me? That's very flattering, Robert. Perhaps we can discuss it later in my office. At the moment, I'm, I'm preoccupied with this problem. Sure, Professor. You say there was a malfunction in your department? Yes, we lost our main control unit. Really? We lost our control unit, too. About how long ago? Maybe ten minutes ago? Maybe the two are connected. I wonder. The entire building probably experienced the power surge. i better check with engineering. Professor! Professor Pym! Yes, Frank? I think you'd better come down here, sir. What is it? I can't explain it. I think you'd better see this for yourself. <laughs> Whatever it is must have been caused by those disruptions in the particle field. Any idea what it is? None. I don't even know how to analyze it. According to this particle scanner, it doesn't even exist. No readings at all? None. Unless you could derive readings from a flat line on a spectrometer. There are... This thing obviously doesn't respond to normal analysis, Mers. That doesn't particularly surprise me. Why not, Professor? Well, the type of experiments we've been performing here have been known to yield a strange variety of energy phenomena. You mean this could be some new form of energy? It would be hasty and unscientific to conclude that so readily, Mr. Lomax. Really? What do you think it is, Mayors? I don't know. We need more time to study it. Some of us are compelled to do more than just ask obvious questions in order to find the truth. No need to get upset, Frank. I'm sorry. Excuse me. But this is a very unsettling situation. Apparently this wasn't the day to visit. Why don't you both go back to the laboratory? I'll be along shortly. We can have dinner together. Fine. Come on, Bob, let's go. Did you have to bring them both down here? I didn't see any harm in it. But that man's a journalist. Aren't you worried about letting too many people know about this? You should be more cautious. I wouldn't worry about Robert. But we know absolutely nothing about this phenomenon. The last thing we need is to have it spread all over the newspapers. I hadn't thought about that. Well, in any case, we can't conclude anything until the processing unit is operational again. Why don't you come to dinner with us? That's very kind of you, Professor, but I prefer to remain here and wait until the system resets itself, and then I can take some further reading. Well, if you change your mind, we'll be at the Waiyi. Call me if anything should happen. Of course. <laughs> and Anne was trying to explain it to me. I'm a little rusty on my physics, I must say. It was mm -hmm. much help. <laughs> so, I need to know, basically, this machine that you use yes. is a, a kind of atom accelerator? Essentially, yes, Robert, although most scientists use an accelerator to examine how various atomic and subatomic particles disperse. What Frank and I are doing is somewhat different. We try to increase the velocity of various atoms to near the speed of light. In doing this, we hope to study the phenomenon that as the particle approaches the speed of light, time passes more slowly for that particle. 
So then you claim that these particles will be traveling in time? Not quite. They just travel on a time frame slower than ours. Which is a function of their velocity. Exactly, my dear. Couldn't changing the conditions of time and space have some damaging effects? What do you mean? What we saw in your laboratory this afternoon. How do you account for that? I'm sure there's a perfectly rational explanation. Probably some residual energy from the accelerator. It draws a tremendous amount of power, you know. Frank insisted on staying in the lab tonight. I'm sure he'll find the reason. Pretty conscientious, isn't he? More like obsessive, I'd say. No, Annie, I wouldn't be so hard on poor Frank. He's a very talented scientist. Oh, I know, Father, but he's just so cold. What do you mean, cold? Well, today, for instance, he obviously didn't want Bob or me there. Oh, I think he's much more worried about Robert than you. Yes, he certainly doesn't care much for me. Probably for a number of reasons. Well, there's nothing I can do about that. I don't know, Professor. He seemed almost as if he were hiding something this afternoon. Oh, I wouldn't worry about Frank. Ambitious scientists often appear secretive. Seems more than just secretive to me, Professor. I assure you, Robert, Frank is quite harmless. Incredible. This is incredible. This data is very strange. The energy readings here match those in the accelerator room. I wonder. How can these readings be identical? Unless... Unless the energy field from the accelerator has spread throughout the building. Hello, operator. Get me Ocean 453. <laughs> Just your article in Science Today, Professor. Yeah. Very, very impressed with it. Excuse me, Professor, there's a phone call for you. Oh, thank you. Excuse me. I don't care what your father says. I think Mayors is up to something, and I'm going to find out what it is. Bob, don't be a fool. Come on, Anne. You saw Mayors today. If he's not hiding something, I'll leave my hat. Bob, no one knows what that field is or what it might do. That's exactly why I should investigate. This could be big news. Yes, Frank, what happened? Frank? It's nothing, Professor. I seem to have made a mistake in my calculations. Everything's fine now. Did you discover anything about the disturbance in the accelerator room? Not yet. I'll speak with you about it tomorrow. Goodbye. You are wise not to reveal our presence, Mares. But after all, it was your primitive time space experiment that brought us here. We have much to learn about this dimension. Now, tell us about your friend, Lomax.
Looks like my hunch paid off. Mayors knows a lot more than he's letting on. Up. Come on out. I know it's you, Mayors. I know you want to proceed as quickly as possible, but what about this journalist, Lomax? He's too intelligent not to have suspicions. Lomax has been terminated. Hello, Frank. Is my father here? Yes, uh, of course. He's in the accelerator room. Why? Is anything wrong? Bob didn't meet his deadline this morning, and no one from the paper has seen or heard from him. He was coming here last night. You, uh, haven't seen him, have you, Frank? No. As a matter of fact, I left early, about an hour after the three of you. Frank, could you read me the radio admission figures for the last run? Certainly, Professor. Uh, by the way, your daughter is here. Oh, well, tell her to come down here. Yes, Professor. The uh, figures for the first reading are Alpha, 87.48, Beta, 63.56, Gamma, 16.64, Delta, 25.92. Father, Bob's disappeared. I'm sure it had something to do with your experiments. What? Oh, I'm sure it's nothing, my dear. Perhaps Bob just overslept. But Bob came here last night. He told me he was going to. I found this in your laboratory. What is it? This must be some sort of joke. Do you think Frank could be responsible for this? Oh, I hardly think so. You know how jealous he is of Bob. Perhaps we should let him speak for himself on this matter. I think she suspects. It is not important. And it will be dangerous. Once we gain access to the reactor core, our sphere of influence will be limitless. No one will have the power to stop us. What about the old man and his daughter? They are expendable. Who is he talking to? I don't know. But I believe I have a good idea. How could anyone draw power directly from a reactor core? No human could. Then the computer has taken over the entire system? No, no. Some outside intelligence has taken over the computer. But where could such an intelligence come from? From there. It came from there. You may be right. Here, look at these. Readings are unlike anything I've ever seen. Exactly. They defy all known laws of science. Then that field isn't made of energy at all. No, it's some sort of tear in the fabric of the universe. Possibly a doorway to another dimension. And something has come through it. Yes. And my assistant has allied himself with it. But why? I don't know. The thing feeds on energy. Perhaps it plans to use MERS to get at the reactor. Once it's accomplished that, who knows, possibly the city, possibly the world. Whatever its objective, its intentions are not well-meaning. But these readings indicate that a huge amount of power is being drawn from the other side. Yes, that's right. Well, don't you see? It can't exist alone in our world. It relies on the link between our dimension and its own. Then if we close the field... We may be able to trap and destroy it in our own time frame. 
Yes, we have to reverse the accelerator to do that. And if we did that, we might destroy the entire research complex. Under the circumstances, we'll have to consider that a necessary risk. Yes, so it would seem. You go and operate the control console in the laboratory while I attempt to block the electromagnets inside the accelerator. But that could kill you. Well, there's a chance of that, yes, but there should be enough time for me to get free. There's no time to argue. Mares could be here any minute now. On the contrary, Professor, I am already here. Move away from that accelerator, both of you. What have you done with Bob? Let's just say our ace reporter stumbled onto an electrifying story. You animal. Really, my dear. I expected better than that from you. Frank, what have you done? What is this thing you've allied yourself with? You mean you haven't discovered that yet, Professor? Look around you. It's taken over the entire complex. With my help, its power will soon be unlimited. You mustn't do that, Frank. Can't you see this thing is evil? Evil? Oh, really, Professor? And what about you? What about all the experiments I designed for you? Experiments which you took sole credit for. You received a researcher's credit like all my other assistants. Didn't I share the Nobel Prize money with you? Your money was not important, Professor. I wanted independence. My own laboratory, my own assistants. I've grown sick and tired of sharing the credit with you. You're a has-been, Professor writing on your own insignificant past accomplishments. Frank, I can't believe you've grown so callous. This accident has changed you. Accident? Accident? This was no accident, Professor. I spent months planning these experiments while you were still fumbling with the fundamentals of particle acceleration. I had already unlocked the accelerator's true potential, the ability to open doors to other dimensions. That's right, Professor. I've planned this from the beginning. You're mad. Frank, what about the creature? What do you think will become of you once it accomplishes its goal? It'll destroy you just as it plans to destroy us. You mean nothing to it, Frank. Can't you see? It allows you to control it only in order to achieve its aims. Once those aims are realized, you will become expendable. Shut up! Shut up, you're wrong. It needs me. It would never hurt me. I am like a father to it. I am its creator. <laughs> dead? No, he's only unconscious. Here, take this. You must get to the lab quickly. There's not much time. Extraordinary.
Yeah, yes, I think so. Reverse the acceleration now, Annie. Th there's no time. Now? You're not First going anywhere, Professor. You will die here with me! Over here, Annie. Everything's gone. What happened? The creature has established himself in the in the electrical field of the building. So much that he released a, a tremendous amount of energy when he was pulled back into his own dimension. It's a miracle we're still alive. And Frank. He attacked me. And, and during the struggle, he stumbled into the energy field. You think he might still be alive? We'll never know. And yet, Frank understood much more than he ever revealed. 